Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Cece Michael. I'm with the Institute for Service Excellence, and uh, we are sponsoring today's webinar by Modern Cleaning. Um, this is the first in their series, a uh, new, new webinar series, Think Third Thursdays. Uh, that, that's their uh, uh, schedule for their webinar series. But this one's the first in a collection that's going to be uh, focused on measuring clean. And uh, today, as, as, as has been indicated, we're uh, Tom and Janice of Modern Cleaning are going to be talking about a particle counter. It's a really simple, a pretty simple device with some uh, pretty big implications for uh, for how it can help your business. Um, so, kind of excited. This is new. Uh, I, I certainly had never uh, heard of one or, or thought of one, and uh, it opens up some some new avenues. Um, we are just now kind of getting our, our main collection of folks popping in pretty pretty rapidly now. So we're going to uh, hold for a couple of minutes, not too many minutes, I hope, um, before we uh, before we dive right in. I think we've got Tom and Janice on the line. If you guys want to say hello to everyone, so they know you're really here. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> we follow directions well. <laughs> so I have a question. Um, did Did Lucy get to participate in today's webinar? I hope not. Oh. <laughs> our dog is in another office. She's just too noisy. Okay. She. Uh, the reason I asked folks is that earlier they were uh, running through some of the uh, some of the videos they're going to show you today of how the particle counter works and some uh, some demonstrations. And uh, Lucy got real interested in what was being projected on the wall and started following it and barking at it. It was a li little amusement in the middle of our day. <laughs> We'll, we'll see how things go. If uh, need be, we can break her out. She's on the bench. <laughs> so I know most of you can hear the beeps on the telephone. Those are indicating that folks are our completing the phone-in process of, of logging into the webinar. So uh, um, we are uh, getting more of those. Yeah, I, I know I hear them all. I hope hope you hear them too so you can get an idea of how, how popular we are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so, sometimes I check the box that says don't hear the beep. Uh, so you may not hear the beep. <laughs> Tom's made, making beeping Beep. sounds. What do you say, uh, CC? Do you think maybe we should go ahead and get started? Yes, I was getting ready to say I've got a few messages from folks who are telling me they're going to, they're running a few minutes late to join us. Um, but yeah, I think uh, from, from what I saw earlier, we've got a really tightly packed uh, uh, webinar today. So I definitely think we should get started. Um, as I mentioned, we've got. Uh, Tom and Janice Stewart with us today uh, of Modern Cleaning. Um, they're also the owners and operators of uh, Castle Keepers of Charleston, a residential cleaning business 
serving the Tri-County area of Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, ISC is really proud to sponsor their uh, um, webinar today, introducing their new series on measuring clean. Um, I know if you joined us uh, last time, last month, they were talking about using the ATP meter to uh, measure um, the bio load of a surface and you know, the, the um, resulting reduction after uh, you know, a variety of cleaning and, and sanitizing uh, tools or solutions. And uh, today they want to talk about the particle counter and indoor air quality, uh, something that uh, might, not, uh, might not be as familiar to you. Um, so uh, let's see, we've got a couple of, a couple of notes. I've got the chat feature open. And um, that is what we will use to, uh, to send and uh, send questions or comments or needs during the, the presentation. As much as possible, uh, I'm gonna, gonna try to let Tom and Janice work through their presentation. They, they've got a lot, they've got it carefully uh, uh, planned out so that it, it'll, it'll make sense and leads into some, uh, some pretty incredible, <laughs> incredible demonstrations and some videos as well. Um, so please use the chat feature to send questions. Um, if it is something that, that, that's really quick and, and immediate um, and we're still on topic, I, I, I'll try to break in and get that question answered. Otherwise, I'm going to try to hold them to the end. And um, we'll, we'll get to as many questions as we can within a reasonable time. Um, with that said, Tom, Janice, take it away. Thank you, Cece. Um Today's agenda, we're going to um, be moving kind of quick. We're going to just talk a little bit about cleaning, uh, modern cleaning as a, a technical resource. Going to jump right into indoor air quality. Um, we're going to be approaching this from a more of a, a practical application standpoint. Uh, there's a volume of research out there. You can write a book about the things we don't know about air, indoor air quality. Um, so we're not going to try to get uh, too deep into uh, a lot of the specifics, but what we are going to do is give you an overview on uh, various aspects of indoor air quality, what it means to uh, the various stakeholders in terms of, of health and, and just why it's important and what we as cleaning contractors can do with it. Um, as part and part of that, we're going to be talking about indoor air quality standards, uh, how to measure indoor air quality, specifically with the particle counter. There's other ways of doing it, but uh, for the scope of this discussion, we're going to limit it just to the particle counter. And again, the benefits to the homeowner and the benefits to us as a uh, cleaning company. We're going to talk a little bit about more uh, research that we're going to be doing and just a little bit more about modern cleaning at the end. That will be very short. Um, just very quickly, uh, modern cleaning, I guess, started a number of years ago. Uh, Castle Keepers has been in the cleaning business since 1994. We've been doing this for a long time. Um, we always were into to the uh, applying science and technology to our business, and it took us uh, a long time to get beyond information systems and actually applying it to the uh, tools that we use to remove soil. and. Uh, the short story of that is we're to the point now where uh, we're doing training and consulting and we're uh, you know, uh, showing people how to use various products and we can certainly provide uh, certain uh, cleaning tools as well and uh, hope uh, you guys take a minute to uh, check us out at moderncleaning.com. Um, what we're about is just protecting the health of uh, the building occupants and the cleaning technicians, basically anybody who uh, inhabits indoor space, which uh, includes uh, all of us walking on uh, two legs and a lot of people working on four who want to protect our health. That's really what cleaning is about, but uh, until recently that uh, hasn't been given a whole lot of consideration. Uh, part of that is choosing uh, environmentally preferable cleaning products and equipment. Uh, we certainly uh, try to help make that happen for, for anybody who has a stake in, in house cleaning. And we want to, you know, obviously cleaning uh, has to make uh, the environment look better. Aesthetics still count, so that, that's part of the program as well. Um, with that being said, let's jump into uh, the actual facts about indoor air quality. Yeah, we thought we'd start with a few facts. Um, People spend 90% of their time indoors and actually 65% of that time in their homes. And well established, it's well established that indoor air is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air. Um, 
each of us breathes over 3,000 gallons of air each day, and that's a little fact from the actually the EPA website. Never really thought about that, but um, I spend a whole lot of time breathing. Yep. <laughs> That's a good thing, too. <laughs> yeah, better than the alternative. <laughs> so what contributes to poor indoor air quality? Well, there's uh, chemicals, household cleaners, which includes household cleaners, laundry products, toiletries, air fresheners, both the kind that just sit out on your um, table and the ones that you plug in, deodorizers, candles, um, off-gassing from synthetic materials used in building materials, uh, and in furnishings, and pesticides. Um, mold contributes to poor indoor air quality, and not only does mold actually give off spores and mold fragments, but um, there are some toxic molds that give off microbial VOCs or volatile organic compounds. So that's a double whammy from mold. Um, particulates include dust, pollen, insect parts, like cockroaches and dust mite species, and vehicle emissions from combustion engines and jet engines, and just poor ventilation from uh, poorly maintained HVAC uh, systems and things like that. It's funny on the chemical side, some of the things that are actually contributing to poor indoor air quality are things that we do to ourselves. Uh, a lot of the air fresheners and candles that, that people are introducing into their homes are doing it with the idea of making the air better, but uh, there's a lot of research out there that suggests oftentimes they're actually making the air worse mm -hmm. or, or less healthy. Now, um, regarding indoor air quality standards, there are no, no official standards, but um, outdoor air quality measures set by the EPA are often used as benchmarks. Um, the US EPA enforces the Clean Air Act, and it's currently in the process of reviewing the national ambient air quality standards and reviewing the current science to update that, and we might get some indoor air quality standards out of that. Um, OSHA is another um, government group that it's very concerned with worker safety, and employers are required to follow the general duty course clause of the OSHA Act, which requires them to provide workers with a safe workplace that does not have any known hazards that cause or are likely to cause death or serious injury, and more and more that is covering indoor air quality. And then NIOSH is the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. It is an investigative arm of the CDC. And um, they do investigate workplace, workplace health hazards, and they are also good resource for um, air quality action plans and guides for building owners and facility managers. Now, there are five individual states who have developed and put into law more specific standards for indoor air quality, and they are listed here, and it, their standards are available on the OSHA website, and if you are from any of these states, you might want to take a look at it if you're not familiar with them. But all of this is pertaining as far as standards to outdoor air. Um, there really isn't anything out there for indoor air at the moment, at least in terms of standards. Maybe that could be an opportunity for some of us in the, uh, in the, in the cleaning business. Mm -hmm. Here's some cleaning statistics that um, are well, have been well established for more than a decade. 35% uh, of conventional cleaning products can cause blindness, severe skin damage, or damage to organs but because they're absorbed through the skin. 12% of work-related asthma is from cleaning products, and work-related asthma has been observed as much as two times higher among janitorial staff. The Building Owners and Managers Association, which has a big, um, a big stake, especially in identifying sick building syndrome, did a study that showed an 18% loss in productivity due to indoor air quality problems related to chemical cleaners. And the U 
US EPA did its own study that shows $60 billion is lost in productivity due to the use of chemical cleaners. And this is on their website. And there are really good studies that show chemical compounds can interact with ambient levels of other cleaning ingredients to create both additional volatile organic compounds like aldehydes and also ultra-fine particles that can be breathed in. The Environmental Working Group is a nonprofit environmental organization that specializes in research and advocacy in the areas of uh, toxic chemicals, among other things, and also corporate accountability. They did their own study, and it was reported in 2009. They took 21 cleaning products that were widely used in schools in California. They tested them and discovered that they produced 457 distinct airborne chemicals that they could detect in the air. Of that 457, six were known to cause asthma and 11 were known as probable or possible carcinogens in humans. They also identified 283 chemicals that there was no scientific data available about regarding health effects on humans. Um, they had a couple of other side studies they did. Um, conventional cleaners emitted five times more air contaminants when compared to green certified cleaners, such as those that went through the Green Seal or Echo Logo process. And um, even some certified green cleaners had undesirable emissions, which kind of showed that even the third party certification groups need to tighten up to some of their criteria. Now, there are three means of chemical exposure. You have ingestion, absorption through the skin, and inhalation. And inhalation affects, is the vast majority of chemical exposure cases. And it affects your nasal passages and sinuses, your throat, lungs, bronchial tubes, alveoli, and the heart and cardiovascular system. And this is just a list of some short-term and long-term effects. The short-term effects, headache, dizziness, um, irritation of eyes, nose, and throat. And it's real common. You see it with sick building syndrome. And some of the, and some studies indicate that regarding long-term effects, you have real health issues that can appear years after exposure. And they could be debilitating and possibly fatal. So where do VOCs fit into indoor air quality? Um, VOCs are chemicals used to manufacture and maintain building materials, interior furnishings, cleaning products, and personal care products. The word volatile means they evaporate or can easily get into the air at room temperature. And organic means they're carbon-based, and that also means they are flammable. And here's a list of some products containing VOCs. Um, they're common, everyday things that pretty much make our life easier. And they, they're just ubiquitous in our daily lives. And here are some common VOC culprits. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to, I guess, point out limonene, which is very common in orange or lemon fragrances, that's a skin and rep res respiratory irritant. Also, about 15 years ago, phenols were identified as a neurotoxin when used as a, a disinfectant in nurseries. So they are not used in nurseries and hospitals anymore. And that's something that you as a business owner ought to be aware of too, that it's not really Ideal to be using a disinfectant that contains phenol in your in um, children's and babies' rooms. And I guess everyone, you can look on labels, and this information is very easy to find on the EPA website and a couple of air quality websites. Now these VOCs, these are very small. I mean, you're dealing with with things at a molecular level at this point. Um, 
You know, you're, you're talking about nanometers rather than microns. Uh, so the measuring tools that we're going to be talking about today and demonstrating does not have the ability to, to measure VOCs. However, uh, it's important for us as cleaning professionals to, to be able to speak to these because when we're uh, interacting with our clients, we want to be able to uh, educate them and, and just being able to, to help do that is, is adding a lot more value to our service and we'll be talking a little bit later as to how we can use this knowledge to build our service. So the main thing that you should take away from all this gobbledygook about VOCs is they can't be filtered out of the air. So even air cleaners will not be effective at reducing airborne VOC levels. So source control should be the priority when you're trying to reduce VOCs in the air. They can be measured, but they can't be filtered out. So source control means let's not introduce it into the environment to begin with. Right, or find substitutes or... Don't bring it into the house to begin with. Right. So here's a list of sources of particulate matter. Particulate matter is the second part of um, indoor air quality that we can um, affect as uh, professional cleaners. Um, the natural sources, like volcanoes, you can't really change those. And all of these have been around for eons. Um, we have a limited ability to change a lot of man-made particulate matter. And some things I something I would like to point out are the nanoparticles. Um, they are found in a lot of cosmetics, fabric, especially like Scotchgard, things like that, electronics, medical, optical type technology. They create a lot of opportunities, but they do have dangers. That basically means we're getting better at making smaller and smaller particles. Some indoor sources of particulate matter. Um, we hear a lot about popcorn, and we do have a little video on that. We do, we do hear a lot about popcorn. We hear a lot about popcorn and how it affects um, the health of some people. There's some exposés on TV. Um, and we did a little test with our particle meter. Um, cleaning activities do need to be um, separated out from actual cleaning products and processes because the physical movement of a person through the house when they're cleaning and with a dust cloth and a vacuum actually does disrupt indoor air quality. Uh, anything not caught by the vacuum and the dust cloth goes into the air and depending upon the size of the particle can take um, hours to days to s settle back down. Um, regarding candles and vaporizing oils, um, this they put VOCs in the air that um, we can't remove once they're there. Um, specifically regarding aerosols, um, it's recommended that we change our spray bottles from mist to spray so that um, to stream or sh instead of mist to uh, decrease the inhalable sized particles of the chemicals that we're using when we spray directly on items. The bigger the, 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 bigger the, the, the size, the better in terms of air, indoor air quality. The smaller particles stay in the air longer and pose more health risks. Right. We talked about uh, popcorn, and we really haven't gotten to all the uh, specifics of how the meter works, but uh, just as a, a, a preview, this number here measures small particles. Small particles are defined in this case as anything uh, one half uh, micron or larger. This number over to the right is measuring larger particles, in this case 2.5 microns or larger. And uh, this was the initial baseline reading in, in our kitchen here at the office. And we threw a bag of popcorn in the microwave. And we just want to show you what happens. Here's the popcorn. <laughs>
if you notice before we put the micro uh, the popcorn in the microwave, the number was uh thirteen fifty. Now we're all the way up to fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand, seventeen thousand, nineteen thousand, twenty thousand. Okay, so we're up to 36,000. What that number means is that's uh, measuring the number of particles per cubic foot. So in this case, putting that bag of popcorn in the microwave took the particle count from around 1,300 to 36,000. And, and to interpret that literally, you have to multiply this number times 100, which would get you up to like 3.6 million. So there's like 3.6 million particles that are 0.5 microns or larger per cubic foot of air uh, in that kitchen. So we spiked it quite a bit. And We'll see a little bit later when we talk more detail about uh, this particular uh, measuring device that uh, the instructions that come with it indicate that anything over 3,000 really is, is, is bad and undesirable in indoor living space. So Tom's slinging around the term micron, so we thought we'd go ahead and explain what that was. Um, this is a chart that shows um, relative size of airborne particles. They have the large um, circle is the diameter of a human hair, which the average is 70 microns. And um, basically, airborne particle sizes are expressed in metric units. And micron is, base, is one millionth of a meter. What, meter? <laughs> and um, so it's kind of tiny, um, even smaller then microns are nanometers, which it really, you get into gas particles and very molecular type um, items. Um, to give you some more, an idea of what we're talking about, 100 microns is the width of a human hair, 70 to 100, and 20 microns is the smallest size that can be seen with the naked eye. So you can see pollen with the naked eye, and you can see the diameter of a human hair with the naked eye, but you really can't see bacteria. That is below, in micrometers, it's 10 microns, and they're just really not visible. You okay. need a microscope. This is a little particulate size chart. Um, some things we wanted to point out are, um, 10 microns, you're getting into mold, which you can kind of see, and pollen and dust. That's um, a line right here. Once you get below 10 microns, you're talking most bacteria and some a lot of lung damaging dust and fumes from a, a diesel trucks and in, in, yeah, any any type of uh, car emissions. Um, you get into viruses are below 0.3 microns, and the reason that red line is there because 0.3 microns is um, where true HEPA filters um, can below which they really don't. Yeah, work. in order for in order for a filter to be uh, rated as HEPA, it uh, has to remove at least 99.97 percent of all particles. 0.3 microns and larger. So uh, when you start getting below 0.3 microns, you really aren't, even, even HEPA filtration isn't helping you. So viruses, for instance, uh, would be even spitting out of your HEPA filter right. vacuum. And gas molecules, you're really getting into nanoparticles and um, and as, yes. as you said later, or earlier, rather, a nanoparticle is one one billionth of a meter. Right. And that is, yeah, that's you're getting down to the you know, atomic level. You're, mm -hmm. you're you're talking molecules. So, 
particle size ranges, we have relatively large particles, which are about 100 microns. They settle quickly out of the air. And at 44 microns, particles are suspendable in the air. And they are, because they're suspendable, they're more likely to ride air currents throughout the house. Um, there's a study, 1975 study, by Dr. Charles Gerba. A lot of you might have heard of it. Um, he did studies on toilet aerosols, where you flush a toilet and you can actually, they filmed the aerosolized water coming out of the toilet. And these aerosolized particles of water float around two hours after the flush. They're still hanging around the air. And if you have the right conditions, they can ride air currents right out of the bathroom through your HVAC system and spread all over the house with the uh, E. coli and other coliform bacteria and viruses, too. Yeah, we were playing around with uh, using an aerosol spray in the house, and we were in one side of the house and had the meter on the other side of the house and just gave a little squirt. And it was we were in the general area of an HVAC intake vent, and the numbers spiked on the meter almost instantly, even though we were all the way on the other side of the house. So small particles that are suspended in air go all over the place quickly with your uh, HVAC system running. And that's why I make Tom put the toilet seat down. Thank you. <laughs> I thought you were going to say turn the fan off no. in the bathroom. <laughs> and then there are very small particles, which are less than 10 microns, and um, they can remain in the air for a very long time, um, days to months. And these are the type that are so small that even nose hairs can't fil filter them out. And um, there's a subset of those, which are ultrafine particles. They're generally classified as um, in nanometers. And these are, again, on the molecular level. And um, as an aside, the Carpet and Rug Institute is a website that you know, might want to look into that rates vacuums based on these, um, this kind of level of... How well they remove uh, particles in the air how small a particle and, and how many of it they capture, and they get various rating levels. So when looking at uh, vacuum cleaners, that's a, a good source if you're looking for something that does a good job of keeping indoor air clean. But regarding health dangers of these par particulate matter that we're talking about, um, 10 microns or less is small enough to be inhaled. They accumulate in the larger areas of the respiratory system. They damage lung tissue. They aggravate already existing respiratory and heart disease, and they can contribute to the development of various cancers. And we all know the story of black lung and the coal workers. And then there are health dangers of um, even smaller particles, 2.5 microns or less. The danger of these is they're small enough to enter the alveoli and pass into the bloodstream. And the human body has no defense system against this size particle, and there's no way to remove them once they're inside your body. Um, Long-term chronic exposure really manifests itself more as a cardiac problem with the lung is involved, but they, it just seems to affect the heart the worst. So you have the heart and lung and COPD, you have asthma and pneumonia, um, and you have a lot of heart issues like atherosclerosis and even arrhythmia. So basically, the smaller the particle, the greater the health risk. In the uh, particle counter we're going to be looking at here very shortly, it measures two numbers. And it starts off with 2.5 as being the larger of the two uh, size particles as it's measuring. And on the smaller end is 0.5. And there's another term, I guess, called ultra-fine particle that mm -hmm. we aren't able to measure, which is 0.1 microns, but at the 0.5, we're, we're at least getting in the ballpark. But any, any, anything uh, 2.5 or less is not something you want to want to have in your air. Particle counters can be used uh, by laypersons to assess whether or not a vacuum cleaner is leaking dust. 
in the inhalable particle size range. That is uh, IFMA uh, quote. Um, we're more than lay people, we're professionals, and we're going to be uh, taking the rest of this presentation and talking specifically about uh, particle counters and how we can be using them in our uh, businesses to, uh, I guess, really for the benefit of all stakeholders, the people that we clean for, the uh, technicians that are working for us, and I guess just for the growth and development of our business. A specific piece of equipment that we used for, for our uh, testing purposes, our demonstration purposes, and the one you'll be seeing today is this particular device here. It's made by a company called Dylos. Um, it, capable of measuring two size particles that we said said earlier, uh, 0.5 microns are on the small side and uh, 2.5 and up are the uh, larger numbers and we'll, you'll see that here in a minute. Um, here's the display and the number here on the left is counting small particles, the number on the right is counting the larger particles. The one on the left, the larger, the smaller particle, basically it's saying 0.5 and up. So these over here are also included in that number. So if you want to know the number of particles between 0.5 and 2.5 microns, you have to do a little bit of arithmetic. Um, it uh, uses laser technology to count uh, the particles. And this particular device has a, um, a serial port on it that you can hook a uh, cable and download uh, readings off of it. I did that uh, in our home, downloaded about a week's worth of data, and we're still kind of playing around with that. Uh, but these numbers, you take them, multiply them times 100, and that's the number of particles per cubic foot. Uh, this is a table that comes with that particular device, and what it's suggesting is for particles 0.5 microns and larger, if you've got to count between 0 and 75, that's excellent. Uh, between 75 and 150, very good. 150 to 300, good, and so on. To if you've got over 3,000, uh, you now this you multiply that times 100, so really it's uh, 300,000 particles per cubic foot. Air quality would be very poor. Um, this isn't, to my knowledge, based on any uh, you know generally accepted. Standard, but this is uh, a benchmark that's provided by this particular manufacturer. So we thought we would have some fun with this, and we um, shot some videos of some various things that we, we did in the office uh, with various different types of wipers and cleaning products and vacuums, and I'll share a couple of those with you. Um, here's an example of us using an ostrich feather duster to, to dust. And I think that we sprinkled a little bit of baby powder on the uh, on the tabletop there just to have something to dust, but just doing light dusting, the uh, small particle count was originally at around 800, and it's spiking up to 4,800, I think was, was a higher number that we saw there. Oh, 6,000. Okay, so we went from 800 to, to 6,000 just uh, dusting with a, a feather duster. Um, let's do it again with uh, just cleaning with a cotton cloth. Now we were stirring some dust around, so we started with a baseline around 1,400. You can see this number here. You're in the 1700 range now, not nearly as bad as what it was when you were doing it with the feather duster. Oops, don't need to see that one again. Doing the same thing again with the microfiber cloth, and again, you're starting off with a baseline of around 1400. And that looks like that's around 1500 and change. So it didn't go up quite as much. Now this is very anecdotal. I'm not, you know, I don't. It would be very dangerous for us to make any assumptions in terms of one process being better than another. It's just, uh, you know, an example of things that you can do with a tool like this. In cleaning, one of the major things that we're trying to do is 
capture unwanted matter, soil, in this case dust and airborne particulate, and disposing of it in a responsible manner. And what we want to do is get it out of the house. And this is a very uh, interesting tool, an effective tool in doing that. And one thing I didn't mention, this particular device right here costs less than $500. And uh, they have other devices that uh, aren't uh, quite as uh, elaborate. It's got basically the same functionality. This one uh, will run off of a uh, rechargeable battery and it's got the COM port. You back those features out and you can uh, get this device for less than $300. We have a, a residential brand vacuum cleaner. Let's see how it performs. You got a baseline here of around 1700. <laughs> I think that spikes around 3,500. Um, a lot of things are happening here. You know, you've got air movement uh, because of the vacuum cleaner. Um, there's dust already in the office. So, you know, why that number is going up could be attributed to, to a number of factors. It doesn't uh, at all mean that that's because that's dirt coming out of that vacuum cleaner. But again, it's an interesting thing that you can use to, to, to demonstrate. Um, Here's another example. This was kind of interesting. This is a, a canister vac that uh, castle keepers will, would use in the field, and it uh, had a full dust bag. We're starting out with a baseline of 14. Has a dirty bag in it. Starting out with a baseline of 1400. <laughs> I think I saw the uh, number spiked to over 5,000 there. Mm -hmm. Here's the exact same uh, vacuum cleaner. We took the full bag out and just put a clean bag in it and turned around and did it again. Okay, this is a vacuum that has already had the bag changed that was used prior today. I think the uh, highest rating we had there was around uh, 3,100. So that's almost 2,000 difference between having a full bag and a, an empty bag. Again, that's just one quick test. Nothing uh, statistically significant about any of that, and don't jump to too many conclusions. But you know, it would be worth, and we will be, you know, doing a lot more uh, work on this. Uh, I think it's safe to say, and manufacturers will tell you that when the uh, dust bag uh, gets halfway full of vacuum cleaner, it's good to replace it. It's a performance issue. It re removes soil better and stands to figure the more dirt you have in a vacuum, the more dirt there that potentially can escape it and get, uh, get into the air. That is not a heifer rated vacuum, by the way. Um, one of the other important things that we need to, to, to make sure that, that, that we're mindful of, and mentioned it earlier, we, we as cleaning professionals are supposed to take unwanted matter out of uh, the space that we're cleaning and dispose of it in a responsible manner. And when you use a vacuum cleaner, it can be a very high quality vacuum cleaner. Care must also be taken when you're disposing of the uh, dust bag that's inside of it. You can spend a lot of time picking up a lot of soil, and if if you aren't uh, responsible in, in maintaining the vacuum cleaner and changing the bag, you can reintroduce soil back into the air. And this is kind of exaggerated, but it'll kind of give you a good illustration. Mm -hmm. We're starting out around 2,000. Wow, you can see the dust. And we're over 13, 15, 20,000. So obviously um, we wouldn't want to be emptying uh, bags like that in any uh, space that uh, we're concerned about maintaining. Okay. Key control <laughs> strategies. 
Janice and I are looking at each other. You want to do this? You want to do this? So we'll <laughs> kind of take turns here. Um, ventilation is very important when it comes to indoor air quality. Uh, there are a number of studies that are being done in, in schools, K through 12 schools uh, specifically, and one of the things that they keep uh, identifying is good ventilation, good air circulation. Remember earlier we talked about uh, indoor air being two to five times uh, dirtier than outside air. So if we can replace indoor air with outdoor air, it would stand to figure that that air would be cleaner. So that's what it's about. And some of these studies, most of these studies uh, suggest that one of the key factors of, of indoor air quality in schools is good uh, ventilation, good air circulation. Same thing applies in, in homes. Filtration is a second thing that, from a strategic standpoint, is very important for uh, indoor air quality. There's basically two different ways of, of providing filtration. Uh, the first way is, is just through mechanical means, uh, paper filter or fiber filter. An example of that, we just saw one with the uh, paper dust bag and a vacuum cleaner. Another way would be uh, the HVAC filter on the uh, air intake that takes air to the um, air handler and a vacuum cleaner. Um, a second uh, way of filtration is uh, through electronic means, uh, electrostatic forces, using positive and negative ion uh, charges to trap particles. A third uh, strategy, which out of the three is probably the, uh, the, the best place to start, is uh, source control. Uh, the more we can do not to, to not introduce uh, contaminants to the air to begin with, uh, the, the better off we're going to be. It's kind of like putting uh, mats in front of the uh, all external doors to, to a home. If you can wipe your feet before you come in, you've got less dirt to deal with inside the home. Same idea here. So we want to be mindful of the products we use in, in our home and, and, and bring into our home and you know, select products that are, are uh, taking care of our indoor air quality and are not uh, adding uh, contaminants to the air. Talked about HVAC uh, filters. Uh, if you go into your Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart or wherever you might be uh, buying air filters, there's all different types of grades of air filters. And one metric that is used to, to measure them is this uh, uh, MERV rating. And over the left hand side of this uh, chart, it shows that the higher the MERV rating, the more, uh, the, the smaller the particulate that it pulls out and the better job that it does of, of cleaning air. And I've seen residential units or residential filters that go into your home HVAC filter that have a MERV rating of 15, and they might even go higher. Um, one of the things that, that we can do to help educate our clients is if they have uh, you know, properly maintain and make sure they're changing their filters on a regular basis. That let's just start there. Also, uh, having filters that uh, capture smaller particulate and do a better job of that is another thing that they can do. Um, as a side note, uh, one technique that we can use when we're cleaning a home um, is to turn the fan on continuous, where the fan is constantly running. Maybe the uh, it's not making cold or hot air, but it's moving air. That air circulation, pulling the air through uh, the filters, will, will help uh, get particles out of the air and will help uh, create a, a cleaner indoor environment, especially at times when you're stirring up dust. You saw in the videos earlier, when you're cleaning, a certain amount of dust that has settled, you're going to put back into the air. And if they're running the air handler continuously, especially with a uh, high quality filter, that can certainly help improve quality. If you can explain to your clients that's what you're doing, that's another way of, of demonstrating professionalism, care of their health, care of your technician's health, and differentiating yourself in the marketplace. So with that being said, how do you sell this to your clients? You want to help them identify uh, sources of indoor air distress. And we've talked about those earlier with uh, products that introduce VOCs and uh, not having quality uh, filters on their um, HVAC system. All the products that you're bringing into your home, not having good ventilation, there's a lot of different aspects of this that, that you can use to, to help educate your clients. 
Um, certainly want to take the opportunity to explain how you select your equipment to make sure that, that you're using cleaning processes that are taking the best care of their indoor air quality. Um, and you have an opportunity to assist in monitoring and uh, reducing uh, health condition aggravators in the home basically through your cleaning techniques and uh, possibly offering additional services such as maintaining uh, their HVAC uh, filters. You can actually help lower their home. I mean, lower the uh, air, uh, <laughs> they improve the indoor air quality in the home. And Janice is pulling at me here. She, <laughs> she got me off my game. Go ahead. And Cece had a really good point. Um, the particle counter could be used as a way to um, measure change in indoor air quality. Um, it can. It's the effect of the cleaning procedure over time as well as possibly identifying other indoor, impacts on indoor air quality. So it really becomes a source for solutions um, with your client or customer rather than a source of confrontation because they feel like you were there Monday and you cleaned and all of a sudden um, it's just as dusty Wednesday as before you came Monday. and. Um, we all know that Monday's dust is different than Wednesday's dust if you have dirty air filters, but um, it just it's a way to work with your client rather than saying, it's, it's not me, it's not anything we're doing. Yeah, anybody that's done this for a while has experienced that where it's just a very dusty house and you've done everything you can do and next day dust is settled and the client thinks that you didn't clean. Well, this is a way that you can demonstrate that objectively look at this meter your your house has issues that that I can't fix by just cleaning at one time benefits for for you as a uh, running and running your cleaning business certainly uh, there's information here that you should take into consideration when you're selecting your uh, equipment that you use and the products you use and the cleaning methods that you use and even how you Train your, your, your cleaning technicians, wanting to make sure that your cleaning technicians understand the science and can speak in these terms to your clients. Um, refine your cleaning procedure. Um, it's a good way to build uh, trust with your clients. Uh, you're doing more than just, just making their house look good. You're consulting with them. You're giving them information that's useful to them, and you're able to demonstrate that you're cleaning from a health perspective. That creates more value and, in turn, creates more trust. Uh, brand enhancement would be part of that. You're uh, differentiating yourself from somebody who's working out of the trunk of their car and just running in and out and straightening things up and are just uh, basically competing on price. This is a way that you can can charge the rates that you need to charge in order to run a, uh, a legitimate, uh, successful, profitable business. Uh, marketing and proof of, of cleaning. You know, for years, cleaning was nothing more than a subjective thing of does it look clean? Yeah, it looks clean. Well, here, you know, recently, science and the cost curve have gotten close enough where we as cleaning contractors can afford tools such as ATP meters and, and particle counters, and we don't have to deal with it subjectively anymore. We can have real numbers to measure before and after and have you know, an objective way of, of measuring and showing that we're performing and, and providing a quality deliverable. Increased service frequency, especially when particle counters and indoor air quality could be an opportunity. If you're able to measure clean, um, you can talk to a customer who believes that all they need is monthly cleaning service, and if you can demonstrate that you can keep uh, your particle counts lower by increasing that frequency to every other week or every week, then it be it could be easier for some of your clients to rationalize making the additional investment because it's an objective way of them measuring the additional value they're getting for the more frequent cleanings. Uh, new service opportunities. We touched upon some of this. You can uh, offer to change air filters or even in, air, do a package deal where you're providing air filters and you can uh, be sourcing them in quantity and, and, and selling them for a profit. Uh, referral relationships with HVAC service companies that do air duct cleaning and other type of work that perform, improve the performance and enhance indoor air quality. 
Um, indoor air purifiers are an opportunity uh, that you can uh, make referrals and sell. Um, Modern Cleaning is uh, going to be launching uh, a home audit program, and this is coming uh, later this year, that uh, we're going to be providing more information and in, in a, in a, in a process that cleaning contractors can use to go into clients' homes. And rather than just giving them an estimate, actually do measurements and give them something of a lot more value that uh, would... Uh, we believe greatly enhance your chance of getting that uh, customer as an account. Modern cleaning indoor air quality study. We're going to be uh, doing a lot more work in the area of indoor air quality as well. Um, we're going to be testing equipment and and wipers and cleaning products and products in general that uh, you spray, uh, create an aerosol, something uh, that produces an air. We do not uh, easily have the means to measure VOCs. That's really beyond our scope. But there's a whole lot of things that go on inside of homes that, that we can measure that affect uh, indoor air quality. We're going to be doing more work on that. Um, next phase of that is we're going to be looking to go into different homes and start getting environmental profiles and find cause and effect relationships between things that are happening and differences between homes and the uh, level of particulate in the air. And finally, uh, we want to uh, look at uh, efforts to reduce uh, particles by cleaning homes at various frequencies of cleaning. And, you know, this is really an extension of phase two. I, Anecdotally, it stands to figure the more frequently you're taking unwanted matter and capturing it in a responsible way and removing it from the home, the less likely it is that that unwanted matter is going to become airborne and in the air. Said another way, cleaning your home weekly should create a cleaner indoor environment, including air quality, than on a monthly basis. And using these tools, we would, would hope to demonstrate that. And if we can, that's an opportunity for anybody who cleans homes for a living. A number of resources here that we use to uh, pull this presentation together. Here's some of them. There's going to be uh, a sheet that we'll go ahead and, and distribute to everyone who uh, participated here with, with this information. Um, Modern Cleaning, uh, AQS, uh, OSHA, EPA, um, NIOSH, uh, ParticleCounters.org has uh, some interesting reviews. Uh, Healthy Facilities Institute, I uh, want to give a shout out to Alan Rafe. He uh, provided us some, some very useful information. Uh, and we talked to a number of different particle counter uh, manufacturers. With that, we have a little bit of time for questions. Indeed. We've got uh, our, our chat feature open and ready and waiting for your questions. Sometimes it takes a, a minute or two for folks to formulate those and for them to, to come through. Um, uh, you're, you should find your chat feature uh, to the right of, uh, of the presentation on your screen. These are kind of pop-ups that come up as part of the, the WebEx uh, webinar system. And we're waiting, waiting. <laughs> so like I think for that too. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that relating to the larger particles? If yes. you can pick it out of your nose and oh. <laughs> flick it without hurting someone. Oh. And Is that where you're going, Jones? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Forgive us. We have uh, okay. we, we've, we've had a couple of questions pop in. Um, once the uh, indus and glycol ethers uh, are those pretty bad things. Um, not sure if the particle counter is is the right tool for for checking those. What do you think? Uh, no, I mean if they're aerosolized, you would be able to 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 measure the particle. It certainly wouldn't give you, you know an answer to to how safe or, or dangerous they are do you, you yeah they, you have a double whammy there you got the voc of the glycol ether and then you have the aerosol particles that are created when you spray the the um the bot the bottle 
and the little or, or can, whatever. Yeah, the it can. Might be. So yeah, that's that's just the first thing that came to mind to me. Right. If I understand correctly, the particle counter just uh, counts the number of particles. It doesn't say which ones are good and which ones are bad. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. But you can uh, go to and you can go to the EPA website and they have a really good database on all of the um, VOC creators and you could read up on the glycol ether. Uh, it's 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 you know it's hard to say exactly at least off the top of your head what's dangerous and and, and what isn't at least that's beyond my scope of knowledge but the way that that we're approaching it is the lack of the lack of these substances in your home the, the fewer of them the better um, if it's not there it's certainly a better situation than you have a whole bunch of, of of that stuff there it's like the ATP meter if you've got a high score it doesn't necessarily mean you have E. coli on your countertop but if you've got a low score you know you don't so if you got a, a low particle count and, and low uh, VOC levels in your home you you stands to figure that they have a safer environment. Okay. Um, Wells has sent through a question that I know is going to make Janice's uh, uh, medical research heart just sing. Um, is there any data linking particle count with allergies? And he, he's identifying allergies as a, as a common problem for, for clients, and uh, he, he's suggesting if we can link the uh, particle count with you know, increased uh, allergic reactions, it would be a great selling tool. Is this something we can look forward to with the particle counter? I think that's beyond our scope to do, but the, there are definitely VOCs that are linked with asthma, and there's definitely the fact that the American Lung Association recommends that you lower the particle count in your home. Um, so, from those two directions alone, I think you can infer that, but there's no hard evidence. Yeah, we're we're, we're trying to be careful not to to to, to overreach and, and make claims that that you know we can't validate. But it would be safe to say that if I'm suffering from one of those conditions, a logical thing for me to do would be to try to to eliminate uh, as, as many particles from the, from the air and the environment that I'm living as possible. And there, I mean, there are studies. The EPA's got them. Um, yeah, the EPA has an excellent asthma section on its website. But I hear what you're saying, Wells. It would probably behoove us to uh, just do some some research on that and pull that information together, and that could be information we could share with our clients and prospects to create more value. If we've got a um, a cleaning process that that uh, does an exceptional job of improving indoor air quality, or at least not uh, compromising indoor air quality, it would uh, be worth our while to be able to demonstrate to our clients all the potential benefits of that. Sounds good. Uh, we have a, a D is asking for your speculation, uh, and, and she, she acknowledges that up front. Um, why do you think it is that when we turn on the fan uh, in our home that more sneezing occurs at that time? Is it possible the fan reverses the dust and debris particles sitting on an AC filter? Any air movement would take dust that is settled and would make it airborne. And if if it's airborne and if it happens to be in the same plane as your nose, then you would be breathing more particles in than you would when that dust is settled. You know, there's studies that um, pertaining to floor coverings with carpet versus hardwood, and I guess for a long time the belief was that uh, you could have better indoor air quality and less dust in a home if you had uh, hardwood floors. It was better for you if you had respiratory issues. Uh, more current research, uh, research suggests just the opposite, that uh, carpet will hold dust. You might have dust in your home, but if it's in your carpet, you're not breathing it, so it's not that big a deal. Dust that you're breathing is the dust that you need to be most concerned about. And if you uh, maintain your carpet, then you can actually have uh, 
better indoor air quality than, than you would with a hardwood floor because every time your HVAC kicks on, it, uh, the dust that's just laying there kicks right up into the air, into the uh, plane that your, your nose is, and you breathe it. There's a lot going on there. I know, you know one of the reasons that uh, HVAC servicers offer the, uh, um, the, the cleaning packages is because a lot of times, uh, you know, what, what is coming into the, the system settles inside the ducts, which naturally means when the air is flowing through it, it can be picking up any of that at any time. Um, so that, that, can, uh, that can be a, one of the more tricky elements of, of indoor air quality, I imagine. Um, Sarah would like to know, uh, does Castle Keepers have customers who are asking uh, about their particle levels in the air? And, and what Not is Castle yet. Keepers doing in response? <laughs> Uh, no, we haven't uh, really introduced this uh, piece of equipment uh, to our clients yet. Um, it's our anticipation here. We've um, we've made some commitments here real soon that that um, that's about ready to change. Well, that'll be exciting to keep up with. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some updates as that uh, that happens. Let's see. Uh, we have a follow-up from Wells, I think. Um, it would be very helpful to test particle count before and after traditional cleaning methods and chemical-free cleaning methods. Um, and he's glad to know that uh, Modern Cleaning is planning to test this out. So that's uh, another thing I expect we'll all be, uh, be watching for as uh, uh, this study you've referred to launches uh, in November. That will be following the uh, ARCSI convention. Um, and uh, Modern Cleaning will certainly be there. Tom and Janice will be uh, in Chicago and would love to, to talk with you more there and uh, hear your ideas for uh, on what we're doing and uh, make some suggestions. Um, you know, they've got their website, moderncleaning.com, and uh, it's, it's a great place to keep up with, with the science. Um, uh, they mentioned that, uh, that uh, they'll be getting out to you a collection of the, uh, the resources that were used to, to generate this uh, um, webinar today, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be working on that. Um, and that should be up on their website pretty soon as well uh, to, to continue building out their, uh, their science and, and technology section. Um, following from that, Wells mentioned the, uh, the chemical free cleaning method. Um, that's certainly a, a near and dear topic uh, to, uh, to Tom and Janice and kind of the, the, motiv the original motivation for modern cleaning. And uh, they've got some things in the works for uh, chemical free cleaning technician training and uh, um, supplements for, for you know, making that transition in your business if you would uh, be interested in that. And some announcements coming out soon there as well. Um, Probably one of the first things you heard about Modern Cleaning was that they offer equipment and uh, have, have recently expanded their equipment line. They're known for the, for the um, kind of the true high quality top of the line ladybug uh, for dry steam vapor cleaning. Um, and they've recently added the Vapamore line, um, which, is a, which has a smaller uh, model and option for you to look at. And uh, they're, I hear they're about ready to, to launch an affiliate program if you're interested in, in the, um, kind of joining forces and, and being part of the chemical free cleaning wave, which is, is certainly growing. If you missed it a few weeks ago, ARCSI announced that uh, they had uh, officially partnered with a commercial chemical free cleaning organization called the Chemical Free Cleaning Network. So we're, uh, Modern Cleaning's pretty, pretty happy to, uh, to uh, you know, continue and, and focus and, and kind of specialize in the residential cleaning area and, and research. And uh, the, the CFCN is, is uh, as I mentioned, more focused on the, the commercial side of things. Um, so certainly, Tom and Janice uh, invite you to, to continue uh, being involved. As, as I mentioned earlier, ISE is the sponsor for the uh, um, Modern Cleaning uh, webinar series, third Thursdays at 3.30. <laughs> you can keep all your THs together, third Thursday of the month at 3.30. We're going to keep that, uh, keep that schedule. Um, uh, I tried, I tried to, to, to weasel out a next month's topic from Tom and Janice, but they're keeping that, that close. I think they may have a really good one. 
Um, but I certainly uh, hope with through the ISC newsletter to be uh, helping to make that announcement soon. Yeah, it's um, be, we're, and, and just to, to add, I guess uh, the one following that in October, we're going to be in Chicago at the ARCSI convention. So if you're there, we're going to be doing a live uh, webinar at this time uh, two months from now. So uh, maybe we'll be doing something that one kind of leads to the other. That would be fantastic. Uh, certainly uh, excited to get this uh, regular webinar series uh, going, and uh, we'll look forward to to continuing the announcements. Um, we've gotten uh, some thank yous and uh, uh, for, through our chat, and uh, no further questions. But certainly uh, visit moderncleaning.com, and there is a uh, a contact. Um, page there where you can send questions or perhaps even suggestions of what you think uh, you'd like to see Tom and Janice test out uh, with the particle counter or, or any other measurement tool you have uh, come across or found intriguing. Uh, you know, sometimes we're, you know, modern cleaning isn't the first one to, to know what's, uh, what's out there and we love to learn from, uh, from you guys too. Tom, Janice, any, any final, final words before we sign off for today? I appreciate everybody's uh, time and, and, and sharing this moment with us. And you know, I would like to, uh, I guess, reiterate what uh, Cece just said. Um, it's about us figuring out uh, what works best and what science is out there and how to apply it to our industry. And the more people express an interest in this and want to help and have ideas, the better. So um, let us let us know what you're thinking. And thank you, everybody. Thank you, and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.